Oh, that seems fishy. We've invested in new logistics offerings and related technology and data science to further diversify our logistics operations. Translate, we're kind of screwed. This is very, uh, very concerning. It just reeks of financial engineering. These are growth stocks. These are growth businesses. So when you don't have the growth, you don't get the multiple. You don't get the premium. Sorry, folks. This business is a sham. Wish is a marketplace, a product marketplace. You can buy a bunch of different products there. Uh, they're cheap. Okay. That's the whole name of the game. Cheap products. And, you know, Wish classifies it as we are a marketplace for any, any and all socioeconomic you know, status individuals basically means we sell cheap stuff, generally lower quality stuff that's really cheap. Um, so how do they do that in a marketplace model? The answer is their sellers are basically all from China. These are Chinese manufacturers selling direct to consumer via Wish. Pretty much the name of the game. We've spoken about this as a trend on Amazon's marketplace before, where pre-corona, the top thousand, maybe top 10,000 sellers on Amazon, it was almost, I think it was around 48% were from China, which basically means these are Chinese manufacturers. Almost half of the top 10,000 sellers on Amazon pre-corona were from China. Wish's business is basically you take that 48% and that is their 90% of sellers, right? This is basically just Amazon, but the Chinese manufacturer is selling really cheap stuff. And, and the name of the game for Wish and how it's grown over the past few years is basically how well they can handle fulfillment, right? The stuff is coming from China the more they can narrow that fulfillment window because because the idea is you order this thing and it's like two bucks but it'll be here in like two weeks and as we've seen with cons you know that american consumer they want stuff now not in two weeks not even in two days now like two hours and so basically for wish the name of the game for them has been kind of investing in fulfillment and how do they get more inventory closer to the consumer so they can do the fulfillment faster that's pretty much been the name of the game I like this title from CNBC. Wish shows slow growth and steady losses. Their losses have kind of remained the same over the past few years. Um, their, their growth is slowing. Again, all of these platform businesses, these are growth stocks. These are growth businesses. So when you don't have the growth, you don't get the multiple. You don't get the premium. That's the name of the game. It's all about growth. That's the whole thing, right? Value stocks and growth stocks. These are. Absolutely. These are like the growth of growth stocks. If, if your growth is slowing, probably not off to a good start. So let's look at their numbers. So wish to its credit. I mean, they don't try to skirt this kind of Amazon seller thing. They do mention it, but they definitely are trying to water it down in the filing. Today, most of our merchants are based in China. We initially grew our platform focusing on merchants in China, the world's largest exporter of goods for the last decade. Due to these merchant strength and selling quality products at competitive prices, I would say, translate, low quality products at super cheap prices, we continue to expand our merchant base around the world. And then the rest of this thing is starting to show how they have merchants in other places. But that's really not the case. You know, like the one, and they don't, they don't list numbers. The only number they list is, say, we have almost 50,000 Wish local partners. So these are you know, businesses based in the US, for example, but they have over 500,000 merchants. So best case scenario, that's 10%. Worst case scenario, that could be 5%. You know, we don't know how many total merchants, but let's say they've got 600,000 merchants. Now you got, you know, less than 10% of your merchants are local, which by the way, is still a super small number. Our revenue grew from 1.1 billion in 2017 to 1.9 billion in 2019 at a compounded annual growth rate of 31%. Yeah, it's not, you know, it's not amazing. And from 1.3 billion for the first nine months, they were still able to kind of, you know, have, have decent growth, 30% growth, uh, 2020 first nine months compared to the first nine months of 2019. Product boost here, it's talking about 
their logistics services, right? That's really the, the name of the game for these guys. I mean, the, the cost of revenue stat is nice. Think about them paying out, you know, their merchants. One point seven, uh, one point nine billion in uh, twenty nineteen. Four hundred forty million cost of revenue. Sales and marketing is a lot, though. I mean, look at this: one point four billion. I mean, look at their operate. Like, look at the. I mean, the opex on product development and their G and A. I mean, it's it's nothing. I mean. The sales and marketing of this, like if, if, if they turn off the, the marketing spigot, this company dies. Look at that. It is ginormous. On the merchant platform in 2019, in response to certain expected changes to the United Universal Postal Union Treaty. Actually, you forgot to mention this. You know, the U.S. has had uh, this treaty. Which is why we've talk, talked about on the show how, you know, there's all these reports of of random people in the U.S. Um, receiving like hair ties in the mail from from Chinese uh, merchants, and what they do is they're sending you a package, and then they're leaving a review from your address, kind of on your behalf. They're showing like the the tracking ID to Amazon, and then they can go and leave a review as you for themselves. It's this whole kind of review hacking scandal, and it was made possible because they have these super low rates in this. Um, kind of a treaty, international shipping treaty, treaty via the USPS, that you can ship like hair ties and stockings and stuff, um, which costs nothing to make, right? Like a cent in China. And the shipping is super low. And now these sellers can, Chinese sellers can build status on Amazon, for example, can build, you know, ratings and reviews. Massive scandal. We've talked about it before on the show. And look at this here. In response to certain expected changes to this treaty and overall increasing logistics costs globally, particularly costs related to China Post services, we have invested in new logistics offerings and related technology and data science to further diversify our logistics operations. Translate, we're kind of screwed. The percentage of packages shipped through our proprietary logistics platform has grown substantially from 0% to over 90% in September 2020. That just means they're doing the routing on their own. It doesn't mean they have a solution to this was an arbitrarily low, artificially designated rates from this treaty. Now that it's going away because of the Trump administration, what are they going to do? Of this volume, we perform all of this on behalf of our merchants. The remaining, they can choose the carrier. As a result, we grew our logistics revenue. We grew our logistics revenue from over six million to approximately six hundred million. Did I read that right? 600 million. They're logging this as logistics revenue. Oh, that seems fishy. That seems super fishy. Logistics revenue. No way. Yeah, yeah, that, ooh, 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 this is, this is very, very concerning. Um, okay, here it is. Page 93, you get that far. Logistics revenue, our logistics offering for merchants introduced in 2018 is designed for direct end-to-end -end single order shipment from a merchant's location to the user. Logistics services include transportation and delivery of the merchant's products to the user. Merchants are required to prepay for logistics services on a per order basis. And what's cost of? Cost of revenue includes co-location and data center charges, interchange and other fees for credit card purchasing, services fraud, cost of refunds and chargebacks, shipping charges, tracking costs, warehouse fees, and employee related costs. Sorry folks, this business is a sham. Look at this. This is a joke. The only reason they're getting the growth they're getting is because of this logistics revenue thing. This is not okay. 
Uh, 56 million in logistics revenue Q1, 100 million in Q2, 150 in Q3. You take those things away because here's the real question. What's the margin on the logistics revenue? Is that really revenue or is that more of just a pass through? Should they be recognizing that as revenue? Um, mm, it seems like a nice way to, to bump up your revenue, show the growth. I mean, look at that, right? 360% growth, 460% growth, 300% growth. And meanwhile, their overall revenue is struggling. You know, the, the growth would be nowhere near what it is. 67% overall Q2 revenue growth. Take away that $100 million. You've got a very different picture of this business. Logistics in July 2020 in the United States, we launched our most comprehensive logistics offering ever. It's called the A Plus program, which manages first mile collection for merchants to warehousing operations all the way to last mile delivery to the buyer. So it's like there being a 3PL. This expansion of our logistics platform globally has led to an improvement in delivery times towards the end of the third quarter. Yada, yada, yada. I mean, um, oh man, it's so, it's so, it's so fishy. China accounted for substantially all of marketplace and logistics revenue in 2017, 2018, 2019, and during the nine months ended basically our whole business for since, since existence. Don't like this business. Don't like it. Don't like this business. Um, this logistics revenue, they, they already have slowing growth, and now they magically have this insane growth rate You know, in the past year. They've juiced this logistics revenue thing, um, which I don't think is being appropriately recognized as revenue. You know, I, Amazon does make fees from third party sellers, um, you know, around like you, you pay for rent in their warehouse, for example. I, I, I can go and look at how Amazon does revenue recognition as it relates to fulfillment fees for third party sellers, but I can tell you. Amazon has a lot more of the infrastructure in its possession if it is charging uh, for these fulfillment and logistics revenue related line items, right? They own the warehouse. Now they own their own trucks, right? Now they're providing a lot of these services themselves. What Wish is doing is acting as a 3PL, as a third party logistics intermediary. And when you look at that business, the margins that come with that business, right? <clears throat> you shouldn't be looking at Amazon. You should be looking at like a like a Kuhn and Nagel or 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 um, I mean like XPO has a 3PL business. I mean there's a lot of these 3PL. Uh, I mean there's these larger shipping companies, right? That they have a carrier business, they own their own trucks, and and 3PL is a part of their business. But ooh, this thing is it's it's like wedged in here and it's buried. Uh, you know, it's on page 90, and I didn't even really notice it as as deeply as I did until just going through it now with all of you. And it just reeks of financial engineering to get the growth, revenue growth numbers to be higher. And even if there is little to no margin on this, because they don't tell you. Mm -mm -mm. I was already skeptical of this business because I don't like, A, conceptually, I just don't like the fact that um, their whole business is taking Chinese manufacturers and bringing them to the United States. Selfishly, what I would prefer and what I'm actually trying to work on in my spare time is to get a, a U.S. marketplace with only U.S. marketplace sellers and to provide that, you know, pick any country. We have people listening from all over the world, right? Wouldn't you love an e-commerce marketplace that is selling exclusively products made in your country? Yes, it would take a little bit of a premium to buy some of that stuff, right? But the point is you're supporting local sellers. These guys are shysters. They're bringing this local seller program in in the last minute so they can go public. It's less than 10% of their sellers. I didn't even get to the whole part of this S1 where they're like featuring their sellers. And, and, and of course, you know what they, what they feature are the local sellers. You know, here's their merchant case studies. 
So these are supposed to be, you know, like, what's that? Um, these other businesses, it's hard to find. You know, they don't say if they're based in China or not. VIP Outlet. I was Googling some of these companies. Like VIP Outlet Wish. Here's Google. Okay. Here's VIP Outlet. Here it is. VIP Outlet. And you got these Chinese symbols right here. But then you look on the site and it doesn't say whether it's from China. Here's this other thing from Marketplace Pulse. We like these guys. Wish Marketplace Merchants by Country. 94% China. Conceptually, I just don't like the idea of this. I just don't like the idea. I th from a business standpoint, there's obviously huge risk um, just from a, from a trade war standpoint, from a foreign policy standpoint, from a, from a logistics standpoint, because that treaty is going away and you're not going to have free shipping as readily available as you used to. Now they've got these funny games they're playing with the logistics revenue that they're not breaking out in the S1. They're not showing me us what kind of margin. They're really not giving much transparency at all. All they're saying is, oh, look at our revenue growth, which according to the CNBC article, revenue growth is still slowing despite these funny games of huh, $600 million. <laughs> They've got $450 million worth of logistics revenue in their 2020 financials. You go back up to the top of this business. And if you look at this business, you go to this number and you take off 450 Fifty million dollars from one point seven five billion dollars. You take off four hundred fifty million dollars. You got a one point three billion dollar revenue business, which is basically flat growth compared to the prior year. That's my impression of Wish. I would not touch this thing. Hi, this is Alex from Winner Take All. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the content. Feel free to leave a comment, ask us questions, and definitely make sure to join us on our next live stream.